Welcome to Counterculture Wise, a Stormcat production, with your hosts, Melanie Hope and James Monis. The views expressed on this podcast are those of the hosts, our guests, and the dog, and do not necessarily reflect the views of any of our platforms, our advertisers, or any other dog. <laughs> As you listen today, please remember, we are so much more than a podcast. All of our stories we discuss are linked in our show notes on counterculturewise.com. Visit there for commentary, guest photos and links, animations, and fun merchandise. If you have a story idea or would like to be a guest on our show, contact us via our website. You can also follow us on Twitter, Gab, Instagram, Facebook, and all over social media where we'll post memes, cat pics, and commentary that gets us booted off on a regular basis. If you're watching our live show, hit like and join the chat. If you're listening dead, well, you can still hit like, share, subscribe, and comment, but please stop voting Democrat. Once again, Max brings us into another counterculture Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I would love to say it's a beautiful day here, but it's not. It's pouring down rain, and it's a little bit chilly. But we still have cardinals in our front yard and a cat at our feet, so not all is lost. Hi, I'm your hostess with the most is Ms. Melanie Hope. Then sitting in front of me in the studio is my co-host, my husband happens to also be my best friend and my sweet babu, Mr. James Monas. Hi, everybody. That's it? Yep. <laughs> that, that, that's all I get? <laughs> Hi, it everybody. is so good to be here. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm happy to be here at long last with another episode of Counterculture Wise, along with Max and Sadie and, and Fritzy somewhere in the studios. I don't know why. <laughs> How, well then, <laughs> how, does a, how does a wild boar um, sign its name? How does a wild boar sound its name? Sign its name. Sign its name. Wild boar. Wild boar. It has something to do with pigs, porkly. I give up. How does a wild boar sign its name? With a pig pen. <laughs> Criminy. What is faster, <laughs> hot or cold? Uh, cold, because everyone can catch... No, wait. Hot is faster because everyone can catch a cold. There Thank you. Go. you. Good. Yes. 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 All right. I knew that one. Yay. <laughs> any others? No, I'm, I'm good. If I use them all today, I won't have any for next uh, week. Oh, yeah, because we all look forward to those all week long. <laughs> I, I don't even know why I do that anymore. <laughs> it was funny once or twice. I was like, oh, God, what's I, he going to do now? I actually had a student that wasn't doing her homework, so I tortured her with dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I told Whatever her. Whatever works. Yep, and you know what? She does her homework now. <laughs> I kept telling her, if you don't do your homework, I'm going to tell another joke. She's like, no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All righty. So, any news today, this week? Anything fun happening? With us? Um, I'm just... I just got licensed as a Christian romance officiant, and one week ago, I didn't even know... Such so a why thing are you going to romance efficient me? <laughs> I do that every day. I'm, it, it actually Am is, I involved? <laughs> but who says you have to be involved? No. Um, I, I, this is more about mentoring young, young people and preparing them for marriage rather than uh, just letting, just being merely a, a marriage efficient, a wedding efficient. I... I'm trying to I'm trying to get better at that, and I, I'm taking this more and more seriously because I was I've been licensed to do quickie weddings for the last forty plus years, and it was fun while well, it do lasted. You, yep. Do you? Yep. I now pronounce you man and wife. Pretty much. Pretty you much. You may change yeah. your Facebook profile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's going on. Um, I don't have much else to report personally. So how about you, Melanie? Hope? Yeah, I'm just trying to get caught up after being sick for a week. And um, hopefully we have a lot more coming up on our show as I get back into the swing of 
animating and doing fun things. I've got a whole bunch of fun ideas that I hope will manifest soon. Manifest. Manifest. Love and, that word. Uh, yeah. Well, I mm. guess uh, our first Weird and Wonderful is right up your alley then. We'll get back to that in a minute. Um, but let's talk about some of these crazy things that are going on. Oh, Target, really? No, this is actually, they're, they're actually, they didn't wise up, okay? Honestly, they didn't, <laughs> they didn't wise up from last year, but they are listening to angry people and they are listening to the market and, well, let's just get rolling right on this. By the way, I, I've been boycotting Target for like the last year because of... I've their... been broke cutting Target. Yeah, well... <laughs> It's easy to boycott stores when you can't afford to shop there. <laughs> I mean, honestly, when you can't afford to shop at Target, I must admit, it's not its not good. Citing threats affecting a sense of safety among its 400,000 employees, Target will not offer its collection of pride-related products at all of its retail stores. The Minnesota-based discount retail chain said in a statement issued Friday that it will still participate in Pride Month festivities in June, but is making the move to reduce the availability of its assortment of products aimed at celebrating Pride Month because of safety. safety? I just did the quotey fingers. fingers. I did what, the Steve Martin quotey safety? fingers. What we're unsafeness gonna... were they facing? Okay, I'm, I'm, there's more to it. There's a <laughs> lot more to it. All right. Since introducing this year's collection, we've experienced threats impacting our team members' sense of safety and well-being while at work, Target said in the statement. Given these volatile circumstances, we're making adjustments to our plans, including removing items that have been at the center of the most significant confrontational behavior. Duh. <laughs> our focus now is on moving forward or continuing commitment to doing the wrong thing. I'm sorry, to the LGBTQIA well, plus community adding stuff as and standing speak. with them as we celebrate Pride Month and throughout the year. Yep. In a separate <laughs> statement, Target said the decision about which stores will offer its Pride product line will be based on historical sales performance, blah, blah, blah. Okay. That's the one article. Let's look at the other one, which reveals... The real reason that Target is doing what it's doing. Thus and so. Thus and so. It's so Target is limiting Target Alphabet Mafia-themed merchandise for Pride Month after massive blowback. Right. Target is dialing back its LGBTQ-themed merchandise for Pride Month after the company took a massive hit in 2023. Aww, it's financial, sweet. people. Don't. There's a, oh, it's for the safety of our... No, no, it's because they didn't make any money. They <laughs> lost. Let me, let me, we'll go into that in a few minutes. Target said it will only offer pride theme items in select stores after having sold the merchandise in every one of its locations across America over the past 10 years, CNN reported Friday. The store did pull some of its Pride Month clothing in May 2023 after workers were confronted over the items, according to KTLA. In this report, the outlet said that the items that received backlash included swimsuits designed for use by some trans women and designs from a company that makes satanic-themed LGBTQ plus merchandise. Video footage shows clothing, accessories, and a home doormat that says, Gayest place in town! Mm. From Target's 2023 Pride Month collection. I don't care about that. They can have a gayest place in town. Uh, whatever. Per the CNN article, approximately half the company's stores will sell LGBTQ Themed items, I'll bet it's fewer than that, actually. It will also have the merchandise for purchase online. No problem with that. That's, it's, that's whatever. The outlet continued, The changes are a sensible approach, Neil Saunders, managing director of retail for Global Data, told CNN, but he warned it ri runs the risk of Target being accused of not being proud of pride. What? Unfortunately for Target, it has been dragged into the culture wars. No, baby, they, but they drag themselves into the culture wars. It's a position where it can't win whatever it does, he said. Listen to that. That's what happens when you take a stance rather than just sell good stuff at a low price. Right. This is the real story. In May 2023, Target shareholders lost $9 billion in stock market Nine value. Billion. Nine billion dollars. Oh, kind of like the eight billion Gillette, Gillette lost when they went. Oh, don't be a man. Oh, oh, don't be a toxic male. Oh. Uh, yeah. Because C-suite makes Let's just mixed insult our entire demographic. Uh, because <laughs> the C-suite mixed its professional duties with its per personal agendas, including advocacy for transgenderism, according to Breitbart News. 
The outlet noted that the company's vice president for brand marketing, Carlos Sa de Vera, Moonlights is a board member of an advocacy group for K-12 Jan- K-12 transgenderism and gay status. K-12, through so children? Yeah, yeah. Ick. So, yeah. I'm just reading the sideline here. Police, $2 million. And then plus, and, you know, then, then it continues about the mixed, mixed sex bathroom yeah. thing back in 2016. Nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares. Nobody, nobody cares. cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. So, yeah, they're saying it's for safety. No, it's, it's they're protecting their assets. That's well, what they're saying. Well, I mean, because safety. we're such big bad people, we're out there beating them up. It's like, um, n- no. No, just there were some people who were justifiably angry when they saw tuck, tuckies for... They said there were, there were they were in the children's department. My understanding is that's not what happened, but the well, fact that there was any... Well, that's what they're saying... Yeah. Now, yeah. they were children-sized bathing suits, though. So, mm. anyway, yeah. tucky bikinis and stuff tucky, like that. Tucky kinis. Yeah. <laughs> Tuckinis. Tuckinis is that a thing? <laughs> Ooh, now I want a taquito. I'm always oh, hungry. Why am I always hungry? I don't. You, well, Dick, you are a bottomless. I avoided today. donuts at church today. You I, did. I'm very two proud weeks of in you. a row. Yeah, I'm very proud of you. I'm One of these days is going to make its way back into my face. I know it, but you right still now, got chocolate covered strawberries, though. I know that was for Mother's Day, and mm-hmm. because there were so few mothers at church because of the weather, yeah, the guys got some too. Yeah, they were yummo. And oh you my got my gosh. chocolate because I don't like milk chocolate. So <laughs> spoiled rotten bread. Yeah, I'm telling a little you. bit, and then fresh baked bread. We have mm. rye and whole wheat and cinnamon wheat, and you're yeah, you're a little bit spoiled, Mona's. Just a bit. I mm-hmm. I have to. Have I even had any of that bread today? I don't think I have. I've been no, trying. I've been trying to be good. Most of the day, yeah. I've been, I've been, I've been it's trying been to be good. It's been absolutely pouring, and I do mean pouring down rain all day. Like we can't even get into our own driveway. <laughs> I might have a grilled cheese after work. Oh, okay. Well, after work. work. <laughs> this is work. I, I guess mean, it's it is. pleasure. I guess it is. It's pleasure, but yeah. it's work. All right, Mister uh, Marriage Counselor. Yes. I, I think you should read this next one. Ah, yes. This is hilarious. And they just opened a new one of these about 20 miles out from where we live. So we'll be visiting that one soon. (sighs) Bucky's may be popular in Texas. That's an understatement. Mm. And while we all love it, it's doubtful you love Bucky's as much as this couple. That's true. (laughs) Wow. Royce City, Texas. Texans love Bucky's, no doubt. One couple, though, took their, and for those of you who don't know Bucky's, it's uh, Disneyland and 7-Eleven had a baby. That's yeah, what it is. basically. Minus the rides. Yeah. But it, with I'm the, surprised they don't have Minus the rides a, with the lines. <laughs> yeah. One couple, though, took their love for Bucky's and each other to the next level. They held a wedding ceremony outside of a North Texas Bucky's gas station in front of a massive wall of beef jerky. Mm. Their jerky is good. Yeah, their jerky is good. All well decked out in Bucky's merchandise. The couple renewed their vows inside the Bucky's Travel Center in Royce City, according to the groom, Stan Sigler, who posted a video of the ceremony in the Bucky's Lovers Facebook group. <laughs> That's a Bucky's Lovers Facebook group. I guess group. I should probably join that. <laughs> Stan cool. donned a Bucky's button-up t-shirt while his bride wore a pink Bucky's t-shirt and bow. Bucky the Beaver. She doesn't look old enough to be married to him. I thought she was a little. I thought she was like the the um, the daughter flower girl or something. No, that's that's the, the wife. I don't maybe know. maybe that picture is just weird. Bucky the Beaver, and no, not the one our WFAA fa- crew found in Denton early this month. I don't know what that's about. Bucky the Beaver stood between the couple and guests and employees gathered for the ceremony. Wait, he didn't, he didn't perform the ceremony because that would have been. They're not in front of the beef jerky. The beef jerky's on the other side of the store. I know this because I know Bucky's. <laughs> Some of them are configured differently, perhaps. Uh, I've only uh-huh. been to. I want to Three see of them the, so the, far. Uh, original. I want to see the video. Stood between the couple and guests and employees gathered for the ceremonies to exchange rings. I now pronounce you husband and wife, and you may now buy beaver nuggets. Buck, buck, and bucket. Okay, <laughs> now, stop yapping and get. But the, beaver nuggets the are uh, like, um, I don't know. It's like Captain Crunch candy. It's like they're they're caramel coated. Only doesn't corn rip puffs. your doesn't rip your tongue open. It, they're they're <laughs> yummy. Anyway. According to a comment from on the she video, she looks from, like a little kid compared to him. Yeah, crazy. According to a comment made on the but video, they're happy. They're, they're happy. 
And that's all that matters, That's right? what matters. They got permission from the manager before holding the wedding. Yeah, it's always a good thing well, to do. Well, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. I, I, no, no, no flash mob weddings. <laughs> Bucky's has been subject to many viral moments over the years, including celebrity appearances by Lenny Kravitz and Lauren Elena. And I, I got to tell you, because everybody knows who Lauren Elena... Who's Lauren Elena? Then other people say, who's Lenny Kravitz? I know who Lenny Kravitz is. And this spelling on purpose, howdy on Howdy a on a billboard. Yeah, it said Hodwy. H-O-D-W-Y. WFAA has reached out, Channel 8 has reached out to Bucky's for more information about the wedding. And then there's the video down below about beaver spotted at a Bucky gas station in Texas. A real beaver yeah, wandering that is around. That's Bucky's, a popular Texas based convenience store chain, has been making headlines for recent billboard misspelling. The billboard located in Temple, oh, that's right up the road from us. Uh-huh. I mean, you know, 45 minutes. Features the phrase, you had me at Hodwai, instead of the expected, you had me at Howdy. According to the Bucky's officials, Hodwai is actually the southern way to blend the words, how did we, in order to talk quicker. How do we do that? (laughs) I've never heard of it. They claim it's a common mistake for people to assume it's a typo of the word Howdy. The company has even started selling shirts with the definition capitalized in the typo. Despite the official explanation, many people are still convinced that the billboard was indeed a typo. The misspelling has sparked a lot of curiosity and amusement among motorists who have spotted the billboard. Okay, so how did we get here? How did we get here? How did we? we? How did we? How did we do that? How did we? How did we? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can kind of, sort of, ish, thereabouts. Okay. How did we? Just like jeet yet? Jump to? <laughs> Okay, cruising right along um, Scotland. Suddenly has a lot of mosquitoes. Okie dokie. Surprisingly large population of mosquitoes hmm. have been detected all over the country. Well, they're pretty popular here too. Yeah, hate these things. All right, as global temperature rises, of course, so too does the range of tropical concerns. One of the most prominent examples of this is the increasing presence in temperate zones of vector-borne diseases, once confined to regions around the equator, diseases that are carried by living organisms, including mosquitoes, ticks, fleas, and lice. Apparently, we have a special snail in this area that, that spreads disease, and we have to be careful that the dogs aren't snacking on them. Oh, great. <laughs> Uh, the arrival of increasing numbers of mosquitoes in regions where they haven't previously been a significant presence, for example, means the potential arrival of mosquito-borne diseases in places ill-equipped to deal with them. This isn't news of the wonderful or the weird. This it's is just news weird. Of the, it's weird. This is why we can't have nice things. Okay, potential arrival of mosquito-borne diseases in places ill-equipped to deal with them. This is terrible news. The latest county, country, sorry, to experience this firsthand is Scotland. A country whose primary flying irritant has been the humble Midge. Poor Midge. She gets all the, all all the, the flack. Yeah. All the flack. All the However, grief. a new research project is examining how widespread mosquitoes are across the country, and it's found that they're basically everywhere. Well, they're certainly everywhere here. Holy moly. According to the BBC, researchers from the University of Glasgow hung traps at 24 locations across the country and found mosquitoes at every one. In total, they found 16 different species of mosquito, a small fraction of the 4,000 species that exist worldwide, but enough to startle those carrying out the study. Researchers were surprised to find the insects in all corners of the country. Now, my understanding is of the 4,000 species, only a few actually care about humans. Right. But we seem to attract those no problem. The University of Glasgow website describes the project as the first of its kind in Scotland. This is a fact that seems significant in and of itself because while mosquitoes were certainly present in Scotland before now, as the research program's account on X points out, this is not the first discovery of mosquitoes in Scotland. They have been here for millennia. They haven't been a significant enough problem to warrant study. As a result, according to the BBC, very little has been known about how widespread mosquitoes are in Scotland. The lack of any such data in countries like Scotland makes it difficult to gauge how to approach controlling mosquito populations and mitigating the risk of mosquito-borne diseases. Surveillance 
systems of the type used in the study are the first step toward preparedness. They provide a baseline from which to evaluate how the situation is evolving to help identify potential risk. As the program's X account says, our research will assess whether mosquitoes could pose a disease risk in the future. So basically, they don't know a whole lot. They just know there's more of them. Wow. And they're evil and nasty, and they all need to die. And they all go straight to hell after you smack them. I'm just saying. <laughs> Your turn. This, <laughs> this one cracked me up because this was actually a, a gag in a Mary Melody's cartoon back in the 60s. No. uh Yeah, seriously. I'll show you the cartoon after, after we're done here. Okay. During the month of May, camel riding is such a popular pastime at the Mingsha Mountain and Crescent Spring scenic spots in China's Kumtang Desert that local authorities use camel traffic lights to avoid traffic jams. Oh my goodness, there's actual camels on the traffic light. Mm-hmm. That's hilarious. One of the last things you would expect to find in the middle of a desert is a functional traffic light, but you can find several in the sand dunes of the Mingsha Mountain and Crescent Lake Nature Park in northwestern China's Gansu Province. That's during, hilarious. During the annual holiday at the beginning of May, thousands of people flock to these natural tourist spots and engage in a variety of activities, the most popular of which is undoubtedly camel riding. In 2023, there were around 2,400 camels available for riding, as well as tens of thousands of tourists per day at the Mingsha Crown. Mingsha Crown, yeah. Mingsha mm. Mountain in Crescent Springs. <laughs> I have not been drinking. I am Jober as a Sudge. <laughs> Scenic spots alone, which resulted in serious traffic congestion problems. Luckily, local authorities came up with an ingenious solution. That's camel funny. Traffic the picture lights. they show doesn't have anybody actually riding said camels. That's true. <laughs> as bizarre as using traffic lights in the middle of a desert might seem, it does make some sense. In oh, 20, wow. 23. Whoa, the next picture really drives it home. Yeah. Holy moly. I don't think... I mean, as much as I would love to ride a camel... In the desert, I think I that'd be kind of cool. I want to do it like that. No, no, no. Anyway, the, on the first day of May, Mingshan Mountain received over ten thousand visitors this last year, and their number grew to twenty thousand the following days of the spring holiday. Many of them walked along the ancient Silk Road, but a few thousand opted to take in the scenery on camelback, and this created traffic jams. Scenery. <laughs> I know. Look at all the scenery. Oh, oh we look at the scenery. Yeah. By installing traffic lights, it signaled when camels had to stop to allow the pedestrians to cross. The problem was partially solved. When the green camel light is on, camels can pass. When the red camel light is on, camels stop to let pedestrians pass first. Well then, it looks like we've got some uh, llamas in there. Maybe yeah. some alpacas. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. Alrighty pretty then. Pretty cool stuff. Interesting. That is a lot of camel riders in one place. Yeah, that doesn't. Why do we like run across more camels when we lived in Las Vegas? Um. Well, apparently there is still a law on the books that it's illegal to ride a camel down Las Vegas Boulevard. I bet you didn't know that. I'll bet I didn't. Yeah. I should tell me sometime. <laughs> you should tell you sometime. <laughs> wow. Okay. And now from ancient means of transportation <laughs> to the most modern. Yeah. Waymo self-driving car spotted in violation of traffic rules on San Francisco's <clears throat> Van Ness Avenue. <clears throat> well, it looks like he's driving. A Waymo self-driving car has been caught on camera, seemingly breaking traffic laws on Van Ness Avenue, a main thoroughfare in San Francisco. Footage captor, ca captured? Captured? Boy, we're both doing it today. Mm -hmm. Captured, and we just washed our teeth and can't do a darn thing with them. <laughs> Footage captured by a local viewer and reported by S First shows the autonomous vehicle cruising in at the red bus only lane and preparing to execute what is signposted as an illegal left hand turn. Oopsie doodle. The car in the picture is not the one, I don't think. I'm sure I that's doubt just a, it. I'm sure that's just a uh, generic. So is Waymo a company? A car manufacturer, yep. or are they, they make, the they ones make, who do? Uh, they, they... Okay, so this isn't a Tesla. This no, is... no, it's a, it's a right. self. What do you bet a Tesla would never be caught doing that? The incident documented over the weekend raises the questions about safety and readiness of self-driving technology as Waymo, a leader in the industry, is gearing up for expansion. The concerning footage was caught at the intersection of Van Ness Avenue and Post Street. Been there. Been there? I was just going to ask. <laughs> you beat me to it. With the vehicle positioned to maneuver against post-traffic regulations, according to S... You know, I keep reading 
S, S first, F- but it's S fist. S fist. San Franciscoist. Oh, so S F ist. Yeah. Or S fist in their case. <laughs> mm-hmm. No statement regarding the indiscretion has been returned. Well, so how do you ticket a self driving car? No idea. <laughs> However, questions persist about how these incidents are logged and addressed as the San Francisco Metropolitan Transportation Authority (laughs) has made it clear that self-driving cars are not allowed in the red transit-only lanes. Hmm. I'm surprised they had to make it clear, but okie dokie. Well, maybe their cars are colorblind. Mm. Safety experts have voiced concerns about the readiness of this technology for public roads. So have we. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing I've, right. I'm voiced concerns about the readiness of half the drivers on the road. Yeah. So. <laughs> Phil Koopman, a seasoned scholar in self-driving vehicle safety from Carnegie Mellon University. Really? Carnegie Mellon University? Yeah, Carnegie Mellon University. Carnegie Mellon. You've never heard of Carnegie Mellon before. No, I've never heard of Carnegie Mellon. Who's ever heard of Carnegie Mellon? Lots of I've people. heard of Carnegie, and I've heard of melons, but I've never heard of Carnegie melons. They're very tasty. I've heard of watermelons. I've heard of cantaloupe melons. I've heard of honeydew melons. I've heard of... <laughs> but I've never heard of Carnegie melons. Okay. Anyways, uh, they spoke to them about the potential gaps in technology. We're seeing a lot of loose ends. The technology isn't quite there. The companies are claiming it's safer, but things like driving the wrong way down the street, you. As long as there is no crash, they would say, don't count for unsafe. As long as there's no crash. Yet. Okay, Koopman remarked, questioning the metrics used to evaluate the safety of these autonomous systems. Well, yeah, because all the like human drivers are able to steer out of the way of the idiot autonomous <laughs> driver going the wrong way down the street. <laughs> on the flip side, some industry academics maintain a positive outlook on the evolution and current status of autonomous driving. It goes into blah, 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 yardy, yardy. I think they have he to make sure. He told KGO the technology is pretty, sa- pretty safe. Pretty safe. <laughs> Just, you know, wrong way, streets, bus zones, you know. <laughs> little things you know all right oh you were talking about this water slide yes i was so how do you rescue a water slide well oh, we are save you? about to find out all right we're gonna rescue us a water slide and by the way drop everything i don't have the sound there. that's okay i'll say it anyway drop I'll everything crash bang boom crash ping and boom. visit our website buy our stuff Hit like, hit share, hit subscribe. No matter what medium you're listening to this, or large, or even if it's a small, go ahead and give us a thousand star review if you love us. And if you hate us, eh, just five stars. I mean, don't do like one or two because that's not really insulting. You got to give us just enough stars that it's it's like a two penny tip. I mean, if you leave no tip, it's not as much of an insult as if you leave a two penny tip. So leave a five star review. Just insult us enough that we'll know we did a terrible job. And, uh, yeah, you have anything you want to complain about? If, if we, you know, really hurt your fee-fees, head on over to counterculturewise.com and fill out that ID10T form, and we will give it the attention it deserves. It deserveth. <laughs> a fan of Ohio's defunct Coney Island theme park decided to keep a small part of the attraction's memory alive by purchasing an entire water slide. I didn't know Coney Island was completely shut down. I never even made it there. That's because uh, Coney Island theme park is in Ohio, whereas the real Coney Island is in New York. Well, that tells you everything, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. So, (laughs) Adam Walterman, who spent five seasons working at the Cincinnati water park, said he was dismayed to learn it would be closing permanently in December 2023 and all the slides, pools, and rides would be demolished. I like water parks. Melanie adores them. I love water parks. I went on Facebook and saw a post going out that a business was selling all the Coney slides and all the pool equipment. I looked at it and thought, why not? Walterman told WKRC-TV. Walterman purchased the Silver Bullet, a water slide built at the park in 1945. Wow, that's an oldie. That says something that was still working all those years later. That's amazing. You still get splinters going down it because it's made out of wood, but hey. Hey. I love the history of it and just Cincinnati history in general, and I just thought it would be a... You just, I just, Lord, I just, just, just... I love the story Keep of it and just now. Cincinnati history in general. I just thought it would be a cool piece to own, he said. He had the slide professionally removed 
and transported to a secret location where he took some photographs to share on social media. Secret location? I've had a lot of interest in it from different... How do you different... secretly relocate a water slide? Mm, I don't know. But there's, there's, I guess, video the evidence of it. The main tower alone weighed 5,000 pounds. The silver bullet was added in 1945 and stood in sunlight pool until April 21st, 2024, just shy of 80 years. It was actually made out of metal. Which is good. You don't want to roll down a wet slide made of wood. I've had a lot of interest. I don't want to go down a slide made of wood dry. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care how polished it is. I've had a lot of interest in it from different parties across Cincinnati reaching out, trying to purchase it from me. But right now, I'm not really wanting to sell it. I would love to see it in use again, but no immediate plans, he said. In other words, he's waiting for a stupidly high offer, which I would too. I mean, you might as well. If you have the kind of money to buy a slide like that, I mean... People want to buy the air and deck chairs. People are remembering going down that slide. Mm. Oh, here's a, a lifeguard that worked there. A good looking dude. Lots of memories being shared. Mm. I guess they had a ladder. Nowadays, that would never fly. No. Yeah. And the sunlight pool is now gone. Heartbreaking. Aww, piece of nostalgia. All gone. It's Boo hard. Bye. It's it's expensive to run a a theme park these days. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, well, okay, Disney overdoes it, but let's face it. When you consider all the costs of maintenance and promotion and all of this stuff, no wonder it's five hundred dollars a ticket. I don't know. I have no idea how much it costs to go to Disney anymore. I have no idea. I've never been there. No yeah. desire. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, there's two things I, do, I don't do anymore that I loved to do as a kid. Long, you know, theme parks and concerts at stadiums. I was uh, online talking with my at friend. Concerts stadiums are no fun anymore. I was talking with my friend Matt, who uh, went to see the Rolling Stones last night in Las Vegas. They had their show at Allegiant Stadium. Blech. Yeah, well, that's where the, that's where the because they could have they can fit that many people it, yeah. for a Rolling Stones concert, and it's like I saw them at a large stadium too. But I was younger. I didn't. I, I wouldn't do it now. It's like the only band I could think of that I would do that for is Pink Floyd, and they hung up their hammers a long time ago. I, I don't wow. think it's... world famous Radio Flyer wagon car is up for auction. Yes, tell us about it, Hope. Wow, I'm looking at the. the well, he's he's just yapping. He's not driving. I wanted to see it drive. It, it drive. They drive it off at the end of the oh. video. Yeah, just, just to give you yappity, a yappity 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 Mother's Day classic car auction. No, they cover it up with a stupid sign. I want to see it drive. There it goes. So tell us about it, Melanie Hope. Okay. An SUV-sized radio... Is that really... I wouldn't say that's... Okay, maybe. Radio Flyer Red Wagon with a top speed of 60 miles per hour and about 57,000 miles on the odometer is up for auction. Judy, not to be confused with Jody, Judy Foster said she decided to sell the unique vehicle after the death of her husband. Aww who used the classic chassis of a 1976 Mazda pickup truck to create the Radio Flyer car about 14 years ago. That was a labor of love. Definitely. I'll miss it, and I'll miss the fun of driving it. It's just so much fun to take somebody for a ride and seeing people's reactions to you. The wagon car is now being auctioned online by Alaska Premier Auctions and Appraisals as part of its Mother's Day classic car auction. Bidding is open through Sunday. Today. So somebody somewhere somebody. bought that today. <laughs> the one-of-a-kind vehicle turns more heads than anything we have ever seen, the auction house said, invoking childhood memories that nearly everyone can relate to. This rig is good old-fashioned fun and smiles follow. And it's, it, is a, it is road legal. Wow. Yeah. Well, it gets up to 60, what, 60 miles an hour. Yeah, so. it's road legal. So I wonder if the... Um, it, what if uh, if that was today? I wonder what it sold for. Let's find out. Let's see here. While you're finding out, I will go to the next article, which isn't really an article. I just we're we're sharing this link because auction, I watched auction, the NBA auction. takes a chance on solo guitarist halftime show. A stadium erupts in cheers. This guy went out with an electric acoustic guitar, and frankly blew me away and i i'm not easily blown away by guitarists but this guy was amazing so uh, well, if you, you want me to play the video uh, sure yeah okay let me see if i can get to it because there's nothing really on here except the picture of the kids so let's see 
if I can play the video, hold on, I have to hit something else. I'm going to turn off our mic so that we don't yap over the top of it. pause so that we don't get in trouble with the, uh, the, the gods of interwebbing here. I like how it's got duct tape on it. Dang, this kid is talented. He is. He sounds like he was trained by my uncle. <laughs> that, I love that opening. We're done. Dun 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 dun. I thought it was going to be Carmen. <laughs> see what he does with it. It is Carmen. <laughs> Showmanship in there that it's just the talent, but also the showmanship. He did the entire halftime show, so I don't want to watch the whole clip, but wow. He also breaks into a Led Zeppelin riff at one point. Oh, does he really? Yeah. Okay, well, folks, we'll have this link in <laughs> our show notes so you can go see the whole video without us getting completely taken down. Yeah, that, that, that riff that goes dun, 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 it starts a song that was in the show I was in, which I cannot even, because of my own standards, I can't even say the name yeah, of you the can't, song yeah. anymore. I remember that. No, what, yeah. What the, the what, what the golly gee willikers <laughs> was Holy that? What the golly gee willikers was that? Holy moly, what could that have been? <laughs> My girlfriend turned into a zombie. <laughs> uh, tell folks what show that was. <laughs> that was Evil Dead the Musical. And yes. I, I don't know where, it's, where they're doing it anymore, but they do tour it now. So if you ever get a chance to see it, it is a funny show. Yeah, it's really funny. And make sure you get into the splash zone. Mm, they don't have splash zones. Oh, that, that, was, splash that was that was a Vegas. That was strictly a Vegas. Strictly thing. a Vegas thing. Yeah. Oh, I gotta love Vegas. Yeah. All right. Next up. Pause. By the way, the guitar. The guitar. I'm sorry to interrupt. The guitarist's name was Marcin Patrzelik, better known simply as Marcin. Yeah, he's R -C -I -N. amazing. He's yeah, he's, he's great. He's, he's, he's definitely got a. a I bet he's in, ends up on America's Got Talent or one of those shows. I think he's past that point now. Yeah, well. I... If he's if he's doing the halftime show for an NBA game. That's true. I I, I don't think he needs to go on. I didn't know NBA on. had halftime. I thought that was strictly a football thing. You know, if you be, I don't I don't remember there being those I would either, call it the stop squeaking for God's sake time. <laughs> yeah, she will never go to a, a, ba a basketball uh, well, game. Well, I mean, I'm saying the anthem for him, but I mean, the college For college women's, yeah. though, that's different. Mm -hmm. the, 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 NBA the NBA is a squeak is, fist. Yeah, I don't know why. Why uh, 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 It gives me the wiggins. They're bigger and more aggressive, and they have to stop on a dime quicker. Yeah, and people are more interested in watching them, too. Okay. Yeah. Positively pampered, Park Ranger gives lion's foot massages. 
Wouldn't Max, that just be Ma- I did massages? this one for Max. I brought this okay. one on for Max. Ma- Max is already in. He's already giving me his foot. <laughs> in a scene straight out of a Disney movie, Alex Lennartine, renowned for his deep connection with wildlife, has been spotted giving lions the royal treatment at the Lion and Safari Park in Vrodersthun, South Africa. Ah! <laughs> Look at that lion. That is the happiest lion I have ever seen in my life. Oh my God, that's amazing. That's exactly how I feel when I get a foot massage. That is a once in a life. I'm going to eat you. Oh, oh, never mind, never mind. Never mind, oh, never mind. Oh, oh, over there, oh. over there. <laughs> oh, to the left. That's hilarious. He um, started doing this after noticing that a cream for paw infections made the lion relax and seem happy. However, it learned he emphasis, 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 emphasizes, emphasizes that this remarkable interaction is a testament to the profound trust cultivated between himself and the lions. Trust me, though, you need to know what you are doing, and a relationship is one that was built up over the last six years. Jammu won't just let anyone touch him the way I do, he said. That yeah, looks like a pretty happy lion to that me. That is a very contented lion yeah. right there. Oh, my gosh. Both of those folks are hilarious. <coughs> really sweet. We have 75 lions here at the park now, and I know everyone by name. Jammu is a star in his own right. Um, And then, of course, you can watch the video if you so desire. But I think the first picture says it all. (laughs) I love that. That is a happy, happy lion. That is one happy cat right there. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, I have to save the baby. I have to save the baby. So this happened out in Ohio. We're back to Ohio. An Ohio man is being hailed. Way to go, Ohio. (laughs) An Ohio man is being hailed as a hero after risking his life to save a baby trapped inside a burning home. Oh, wow. John Stikovich, 62, told WJW TV he rescued the the 11th month old child Monday morning repeatedly going inside the house to try to find the baby in the haze of smoke and fire. Stikovich explained how he jumped into action after seeing smoke billowing out from a house. He was on his way to work at the time and jumped out of the car. With emergency workers not yet on the scene, he acted fast. The mother was sitting on a tree lawn with her one baby and asked her if she was doing all right, and she said, My baby is still in the house. My baby! Save my baby! Yeah. Stikovich told them, and I was thinking to myself, I have to save the baby. He crawled through an open door into the kitchen and started searching for the child. At first, Stikovich couldn't find the baby, so he went back outside to ask the mother for guidance. Then he bravely entered the inferno once again. It was getting so bad in there, Stikovich said. It was getting ready to leave, and actually, and then the baby cried or made a sound. In those harrowing moments, Stikovich was able to find the child and quickly exit the home. Firefighter. Wow, that house was really, really on fire. This, this wasn't no Biden kitchen fire. This was the actual hmm. thing. I haven't seen the actual video, but... Oh my, yes. Yipe. Uh, Firefighters have said the home was fully engulfed in the inferno by the time they arrived. Because, you know, the firemen are now dubbing Stikovich. Don't turn on the alarm or anything. You know, no hurry. You know, finish your sandwich. And crediting for... We're kidding. We're kidding. Take the stairs. Don't take the pole. I figured I'd better try Stikovich said of his reasons for helping. Nobody else was here with me. There's no child that should die in a fire ever. It didn't happen today. And that's a good thing. And he was 62 years old, by the way. Wow. Wasn't, wasn't some youngster. So, yeah, that's... Uh, that, that that house really, really burned. The fire was reportedly electrical and accidental, and by the looks of that photo, there ain't no house left, I'm sure. But at least the mother and the kids are okay. That's the important thing. You know, it's such a cliche. Yeah, that house... But, yeah, that house is toast. Whoa. Well, he is indeed a real life hero. Absolutely. Love that. All right. Well, before we head on into news of the Wicked, let's hear what Chuck has to say. And now, CCW News presents Holy Crap! This is actually happening! Cinco de May Day edition, May 8th, 2024. I'm Chuck U. Farley. The big news this week is the continued pro-terrorist, anti-Israel riots, uh, I mean, uh, peaceful protests on college campuses nationwide. 
The totally organic protests are chock full of students who can't tell you why they're protesting, but they're doing it in fully stocked, barricaded encampments, equipped with professionally printed signs and matching North Face tents. Students say that until their unnamed demands are met, they will continue bashing in windows, setting things on fire, and attacking any Jews they can find. But don't worry, boys and girls. Other than literally banning Jews from all their unsafe places, these kids prioritize diversity. In fact, the University of Washington actually postponed building their protest encampment because they couldn't find enough brown people who wanted to sleep outside. I swear, I am not making this up. From the river to the sea, all parents should discontinue tuition payments. Meanwhile, the angry cabbage in chief insulted the entire nation of Japan, as well as India, China, and Russia, by calling them xenophobic for not inviting hordes of terrorist freeloaders into their countries like we do. Speaking of the enemy within, Thomas Massey faced a $500 fine for sharing a video of House members excitedly and illegally waving the flag of a foreign country on the House floor after successfully voting to send billions of extorted tax dollars to Ukraine. The video received more than 7.5 million views on the platform formerly known as Twitter, which really ticked off the liberals who waved the flags. Democrat Gaslighting 101, always shoot the messenger. Slightly effective House Speaker Mike Johnson reversed the decision of the Sergeant at Arms, so Massey will not have to pay the fine after all. Sadly, we all still have to pay Voldemort Zelensky. Oh, but it gets better. Congress overwhelmingly voted in the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act, which includes wording that would make the Christian Bible illegal hate speech. No, I solemnly swear I am not making this up. Meanwhile, Biden's tyrannical attempts to jail his political opponent are falling apart. Jack Smith's biggest case exploded after many FOIA requests finally allowed less redacted documents. The more readable documents reveal that the Biden regime has been working with the General Services Administration since 2019 to come after President Trump for his possession of legal presidential documents. Remember, he was still president at that time while covering for Biden's illegal stash of all varieties of classified documents. It turns out that the GSA actually forced Trump to take their boxes of classified documents, which he never even opened, so the real allegations are that he accepted boxes that he somehow knew had super secret information, even though he never actually looked at them. To the horror of the entire DNC, due to various pre-trial issues, the trial has been suspended indefinitely, meaning they have one fewer tool in their 2024 cheat box. Letitia James's civil case, in which no victim has claimed harm in business dealings where everyone made money, but the judge hates Trump so much he's finding him anyway, the $457 million bond was knocked down to $175 million while the whole farce is pending appeal. Letitia immediately tried to game the system by trying to say that the cash he bonded wasn't good enough because what she really wanted to do was seize his buildings. The court said she was wasting their time. Meanwhile, Ms. James is being sued by several other entities for her shenanigans, so her attention might get a little divided. In Georgia, Fanny sleeps with her lavishly paid employees Willis's case is in upheaval after the court learned that both she and Jack Smith were in contact with Pelosi's January 6 show trials. Finally, in a hush money case, not much has happened other than revealing that the prosecution's best witnesses are a pecker and a porn star. On April 17th, the cabbage in chief tried to commune with the common folk by pulling into a Pittsburgh area Sheets convenience store to pick up pre-ordered turkey sandwiches for airport construction workers. Just days before, Trump gathered cheering crowds and giddy employees eager to take selfies and give him hugs at Chick-fil-A, but Biden's scripted copycat endeavor took place in near silence with only a few pre-selected actors engaging with him once inside. Employees did their jobs without expression, handed him the bags of hoagies, and he was in and out in a few minutes. In completely unrelated news, on April 18th, the EEOC filed a lawsuit against Sheets Incorporated for doing background checks and not hiring felons because, according to the Biden cabal, that means they won't be hiring any black people. I'll just let that one sit. 
The U.S. military just launched a $320 million pier off the coast of Gaza that they've named the Joint Logistics Over the Shore, or JLOTS, system, supposedly to facilitate delivery of humanitarian aid to Hamas, uh, I mean, Palestinian civil... Ah, oh, who am I kidding? When reminded that he has emphatically promised multiple times that he would never deploy U.S. boots on the ground in this conflict, Diaper Joe assured us all that the boots were on a pier on the coast. So technically, the more than 2,000 deployed troops' boots are not on the ground. So that doesn't count. Besides, he said that J-Lot's broad is really talented, so you gotta love those rutabagas. Orders are to keep shouting, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, until Hamas starts bombing the daylights out of them. For CCW News, this has been Holy Crap, This Is Actually Happening. I'm Chuck U. Farley. Good night, and may God help us. which sounds terrible and insulting and of course none of those these little shows are any threat to his giant show anyway it was a bad I, I don't get it it was bad and I'm sorry Howie I love you please forgive me that sounds like a lot of prospering on the manager that's it no. I meant to say he was no more okay <laughs> Seinfeld's remorseful remark came after he shaded the Howard Stern show host during Wednesday's episode of Fly on the Wall podcast while speaking about the popularity of podcasts, the Seinfeld star 70. Wow. He's 70? He's a good mm-hmm. looking 70. Not he's a bad looking 70. Good. Definitely doing better than the president. Uh, said that Stern basically invented the format. But we're better than him now, he quipped. Howard is interesting. Howard is a great interviewer. But comedy chops, I mean, can we speak candidly? He asked host Dana Carvey and David Spade. Spade, 59, responded, sure, while Carvey said no. <laughs> Carvey, 68, said Stern's show is slightly comical thanks to his longtime co-host Robin Quivers. Her I like. The Seinfeld star continued. And, of course, none of these little shows are any threat to his giant show. Uh, yeah, they're great, but let's face it, he's been outflanked. The producer further, there are better comedy podcasts on the air, including Carvey and Spade's show. This is the best one on the air, Seinfeld continued, because you guys play nice together. It's smooth. You're not jumping on each other, which is annoying to listen to. I've never, I didn't even know they had a show together. I'll have to, I'll have to check it out because I like them both. Reps for Stern weren't immediately available for comment. I don't think Stern cares. Wow, so we do finally get to see them in the same room. I always wondered. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, if you look at this picture of David and Dana, they're starting to look like brothers yeah it's they have the same whipped back middle-aged comic hairdo and yeah yeah they always had a similarity yeah aside from seinfeld stern has made a few enemies during his decades-long career last year the media personality former radio rival mancal mueller uh, both matthew urich mueller took the opportunity to slam stern for vile comments he made in the 90s during the dark side of the 2000s docuseries, Mueller opened up about their feud, sharing that Stern publicly bashed him and threatened to rape him at a time when his dad was battling terminal cancer. That, that's that's old school Stern. I, I never liked Stern. I never thought he was funny. I never I've, thought he was I, I, always, I, thought I never he, thought he was witty. Well, he never did anything for me. And now that he's woke, it's like what little edge he had is gone. Well, the thing about him, the, my in, my entry into... Howard Stern was a TV show he used to have, and it was not the one where they're filming him being in the in the studio and recording his show. It was actually a variety show, and he was so off the wall and so goofy and so funny. Um, I don't you could probably or find it was some him making fun of women and and having them strip and do nasty. No, no, it wasn't and... that. They he didn't yeah. do that stuff either. Um, but you know, I I like him, but that was back. Back in the '90s and and early 2000s, he was edgy. You know, at least you had that. But you know, yeah, once he, he became once he became a spokesperson for Pfizer, I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. Right and now, he's all woke and everything yeah. and apologizing. It's like, oh, I mean, he was, but and he wants another another celebrity who was buddies with Howard, um, with um, Donald Trump back in the day. Mm-hmm. Doesn't want anything to do with him now. Well, because it's um, doesn't pay. <laughs> <laughs> 
My father was a 30000 a year cabinet maker, and he became the number one topic on Stern's show for a year. Wow. That's just... Not only that, but I never understood why people thought he was attractive. He's really not. Weird Al Yankovic is better looking than that guy. They have the same hair. The countdown to his death, how he was going to have sex with my mother, he recalled. How he's going to use my mother's saliva on himself. Okay, I don't want to read any more of this. Yeah, it's... it's um, he was he was over the top back then. But he always attacked his, his uh, rivals that way. Anybody who was, like, threatening his ratings. He just went... He, he went off on them. Vulgar. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why yeah. I've never liked him. I mean, yeah. he... If you have to get vulgar, that means you have no wit. Mm. And that's all I'll say about that. All right, well, let's no, talk about so these... So why are you with me? I have no wit. I'm vulgar. You're not vulgar. Yeah. Half, well, half of the stuff you do is clean. Okay. Let's well, talk let me... about these basketball-sized chunks of ice. Yes. Yike. Yike. <laughs> oh, no. The headline. Eagle, Eagle Mountain, Utah. A chunk of ice fell from the sky and killed a family's goat in Utah. That poor And now our goat. next segment. <laughs> Seriously, the poor goat. Wow. Cassidy Lewis heard the loud bang on Monday morning. It shook the house, Lewis described. It also left her animals in chaos. The roosters were freaking out. The horses were going crazy. When she ran outside, she saw the hole ripped into the shed, chunks of ice scattered around, and a maimed goat. Poor her goat. mind couldn't make sense of what happened. Just confused by what had happened, so I did call the sheriff out. Lewis, the owner of the goat, said. Sheriffs then told her the only reasonable source of the ice would be a passing plane. I would wonder how that happened. Oh, yeah. He just usually said they're, the, they're, bo- um, um, what am I trying to say, the, the latrines. Yeah. The um, sheriff then told her the only reasonable source of ice would be a passing plane. He just said we're below a flight path, and it could have been ice from an airplane, which I had no idea that could have happened, Lewis said. Her own research and calls to the airport left her convinced it's the only explanation would happen to a to crash to a shed and kill an animal. Lewis thinks the odds are one in a million. You're probably about right. Mm-hmm. We're just unlucky, apparently, to have it hit us. No, you were you were lucky it hit the goat and not you, because, you know. Lewis is glad it wasn't her home or her children that were endangered. Honestly, every time I hear a plane go by, I'm thinking, do I need to? Like, it's made me a little bit nervous about it happening again, Lewis remarked. Lewis said the FAA is investigating exactly which flight the ice may have fallen from. Wow. That's a little bit. Scary. Yeah, why would a why would a flight go up in the air with ice on it anyway? Well, I, I, two two reasons. One is it gets ice after it's up there, well, it forms on the wings. Sure. And two, um, sometimes they at least this is what I've heard before. They'll they'll um, it's a word I'm looking for expel or mm-hmm. I don't want to say flush, but they'll. <laughs> uh, literally get rid of their their bathrooms right midair and, out their and bathrooms, because right. they're so far up in the air it freezes mm-hmm. and it comes down as a gigantic usually blue chunk of ice okay so, yeah um but yeah it's probably something on the because they have de- de-icers on the wings right because that could cause crashes and whatnot so it probably hit the de-icer and big chunks flew off the wings and mm. could clunk but it's not supposed to kill people so but yeah I hope I hope the goat was like a service animal not one of their pets that would stink yeah <laughs> yeah hopefully their farm didn't eat it all right Okay, next up. <sighs> Again Oct- with the eco terrorism. Octogenarian eco terrorists? Mm-hmm. These two old broads. <laughs> <laughs> two old broads. <laughs> attempted to smash the case holding the Magna Carta in the British Library. And one another just stop. Okay, first of all, just stop oil causes more damage and more harm and, and actually more issues with what they're supposedly trying to fix than than bringing attention all they do is they make people hate them and want to burn more oil yeah i mean if 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 i saw these protesters in the middle of the street and gluing themselves to crap i'd I'd grab a can of oil and light it on fire and dance around it and point and laugh i mean these people are no i would actually just kind of pour oil i just opened up the can of haviland and pour it on there okay I just showed my age. Motorola doesn't come in cans anymore. It comes I've in bottles. I've never seen a Open. can of oil. 
I remember them. Mm -hmm. Used to, well, but people I, I, still say can of oil because yeah. that's just... But just thing. open a bottle of Haviland and pour it on their heads. Just yeah. leave it at that. There you go. Have a nice day. No well, gasoline because I've been Every time mean. they glue themselves to stuff, they should just be left there. Yeah. And ignored. Completely ignored. If we ignored these people, they'd stop. Mm -hmm. They just want the attention. Anywho. So, two women... Anglican priest Sue Parfit, 82, and retired teacher Judy Bruce, 85, used a hammer and a chisel and were captured on video, not by cops, by the way, trying to smash the glass of the display covering the historical document. What is the Magna Carta? That's, that's like a political thing? Magna Carta is the, is the, the document that's, basic, that's pretty much the basis for all democratic nations yeah. including our constitution right that's what i thought yeah. okay yeah the women w wearing the familiar garb of the radical leftist environmental group held up a sign saying the government is breaking the law which by the way is a boring t-shirt that just says just stop oil and a skull right and yeah, the government is breaking the law is stupid too because the government makes the law Parfit stated, as a Christian, I am compelled as a Christian, I am compelled to do all that I oh, can honey, to alleviate the appalling British. suffering. Uh, as a Christian, no, she's going to sound that way no matter what. As a Christian, I am compelled to do be all that I can. Oh, 80, 80, As a five. Christian, I am compelled to do all that I can to alleviate the appalling suffering that's coming down the line and is here already. A spoonful of sugar, have some medicine, go so down. What does bashing mm -hmm. in the Magna Carta have to do with your idiotic take on things? The pair then began chanting, just stop oil and unison, unison before gluing their hands to the display case. Gluing the hands and waiting to be arrested because that's what happens when you... Yeah. No, oh, I... this is hilarious. The ex, the, somebody posted from X, a couple of old biddies tried to smash their way into the display case of the Magna Carta with a hammer and chisel in order to stop oil. Or something. I want to see Just how... checked. Oil not stopped. Oil not stopped. And That's hilarious. Not, not stopping anytime soon. I wonder if this it won't let me click on it. Ma, ma, ma. British library officials quickly ushered away bystanders and called the police. The display sustained minimal damage, according to police, but remains closed. The Magna Carta, dating to 1215, provided the basis of democratic legal systems and human rights and was the first document to state that the king and the government were not above the law. The document itself, one of three originals, was not damaged. I'm glad because yeah. that's that is that is a sacred document. Yeah, it is. So I'm gonna see that. As we have previously highlighted, these eco loons, funded by billionaires, are acting as shock troops for globalist technocrats oh. pushing for the same yeah. net zero agenda. As such, they're the ultimate creature of you the gotta, establishment. You've got to you've got to talk like um, what's his name? John Cleese. No, Paul. Paul. Joseph what, what what the heck is his name? PJ Dub? Paul yeah, Paul yeah. Joseph Watson. Imagine my shock. Let's <laughs> yeah, see what these old biddies. I are can't do that. I'm, I haven't really learned his accent. I could. Watch the biddies in action. Here you go, biddy 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 biddy. Here, biddy 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 biddy. And dude's just like recording it. He's not trying to stop them or anything. Why why be an activist when you can just be a pacifist? Well they're Passive aggressivist is what they are. Yeah. This, this famous document is about rule of law, standing up against the, the abuse of power. Oh, I thought you were supposed to get wiser when you got older. Nah, she's a kookaburra. <laughs> kookaburra, so this is your old friend. Oh, stop filming, sir. Why? You want the attention, you dumb broad. The whole point you're there, the whole reason you're there is because you want the attention. Stop filming. Give me a break. You're glued to the Magna Carta. Not yet. Stop me. They haven't glued <laughs> themselves yet. Stop doing that. Do you hear me? Stop recording. Why? The whole point you're there is to get attention. And now they're yelling, we must stop oil. And now they're going to glue themselves. Yawn. There are more effective ways. Yawn. The shock thing went out in the 1960s. I mean, seriously. Speaking of shock. Nah. <laughs> Let's go see pandas at the zoo, shall we? <laughs> at the zoo. A Chinese zoo is being criticized online after visitors complained that the animals in a panda exhibit aren't bears at all. What? 
They're painted chow chow dogs. Visitors to the Taiju Zoo in Jingzhou Province said they were surprised to discover the so-called panda dogs that went on display May 1st are dogs with their fur trimmed and dyed to closely resemble the iconic Chinese can't bears. be good for the dogs. A zoo spokesman explained the zoo put the dogs on display because it does not have any resident pandas. Well, they are he, very obviously dogs. But he denied the fur dyeing process was in any way dangerous or harmful to the canines. Uh-huh. Who cares? How is it, how is it You're, not? It's false advertising, you dolts. Well, it, it does say panda dogs on the sign. It does? Yeah, that's what they say. All right. It says, a zoo spokesman explained the zoo put the dogs on display, blah, blah, blah. Um... The Global Times. Oh, okay. The I was just going to get to that. Yeah. As signage posted to the enclosure explains their chow chows in disguise. Chow chows in disguise. Yeah. Look at what you are. They're you ain't cute. pandas. They're awfully cute. I mean, they're kind of adorable and yeah, stuff. They're still kind of adorable. Yeah. They're still really, really cute. Yeah. Yeah. So am I. This isn't yeah. the first time they've done that. I mean, there, mm. there was a, a big controversy about a, one of their sun bears. Uh, people thought it was a person in a bear suit. And right. It actually was a sun bear, but they've done it so often that people are second guessing them now, even when it's a real animal. Right. <laughs> this is not Bubble Waters. It is no longer 2020. But this is your new abnormal. can do things other people can't. And by the way, you know, I shit on the stand. And to get hot, I got a lot of, I got hairy legs. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was going to put him in uh, foot, foot. And I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here. I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. (laughs) Got fired. Ambrose uh, Bosey, they call him Bosey, Monfrey Bosey. And he became an Army Air Corps before the Air Force came in. He flew those single engine planes as reconnaissance over war zones. He got shot down in. New Guinea, and uh, they never found the body because there used to be there were a lot of cannibals for real in that part of New Guinea. Just clap for that, you stupid bastard. What a stupid son of a bitch. Jay Shi Zinde Yi Chong. I'm the only white boy within 20 miles. This next <clears throat> article. I don't even know where to start. I mean, this is so moronic. I mean, it's absolutely moronic. And and that it's even a thing. I'm almost at a loss for words. I mean, I'm going to... I mean, it was ridiculous when they were doing the the, the earlier thing, and we will allude to that. But this (laughs) is uh, just nuts. It's so stupid. I mean, I can't even believe this is a thing. All righty, here we go. Homeless alcoholics are receiving alcohol on the taxpayer's dime in San Francisco, where else, to the tune of $5 million Can I be a homeless year. alcoholic so I can get a free beer? I'm pretty I easy really in San Francisco. Right I could, too. I might send you out. The city provides the substance to addicts as part of a um, managed alcohol program. I managed to get drunk, according to multiple outlets. The objective of the initiative is providing residents with alcohol in a manner that helps to break their addiction. How does providing them with what they're addicted to break their addiction? I think the idea is to control their intake, but they can't really do that. Well, they can't do that. I mean, and this isn't like the needles where they're, well, you know, even, where it's even, something you can... I mean, you can walk into a grocery store in California and buy beer. That's nothing. Or or bum money off of somebody and go get a beer. Nobody's going to... I mean, it's so... If this is idiotic. Yeah, it, the city it's, it's provides dumb. the substance to addicts as part of a managed alcohol program. Okay. 
Alice, don't even give a crap about her last name because she's an idiot, a nurse manager for the program, touted the benefits it offers to him <clears throat> clients in a video presentation that clients? was shared by another user this on This is like Pets. they're going to a, a salon to get a facial. Yeah, what, what are you talking the, the about? Clients, clients. Yeah. Managed alcohol program. Ridiculous. I'm not even going to play it. You can go to counterculturewise.com if you want the link. What makes managed alcohol program unique is that we actually provide measured and regulated doses of beverage alcohol, usually in the form of vodka or beer, to people with severe alcohol use disorder, she commented. That's not unique. That's just being a bartender. Only now the government is paying for it. And you know when the government is doing it, they don't do it right anyway. Yeah. Well, they're probably but not getting the, Budweiser, though, knowing the government. This thing on, on X is saying they not, don't just get Lead physician they, Dr. Tanya Majumder right. further cited the program's commitment to the autonomy of chronic severe alcoholics in the same presentation. Autonomy. Here the lead physician for San Francisco's managed alcohol program, of course it's called MAP, explains how they justify giving alcohol to alcoholics ethically. They simply do not consider abstaining from alcohol as a possibility. Well, why don't we just buy prostitutes for sex addicts? And, and well, instead, these guys also get tickets to Giants games. Did you know that? There's, I did not know that. Yeah, I was, I was going to read earlier. They, they get meals. They get all kinds of other stuff. They get, they, they, wow, they, if you're going to be a bum on the street, I mean, San Francisco is the place to do it. Instead, they allow patients to exercise autonomy by making their own choices. Isn't that what got them to be drunks in the first damn place? The program operates within the confines of a converted hotel. Nurses offer vodka, beer, and other beverages multiple times per day in accordance to the needs of each homeless person. Um... So you're just feeding their addiction if they mm -hmm. need... I... I... Maybe their heart's in the right place, but their brain sure ain't. Well, they're liberal, so they just want slaves. I, I, I don't That's know. why we're importing them from all over the world. I try to give world. people the benefit of the doubt, but this is stupid. This is dumb. <laughs> Democrats never gave up slavery. They're just converting more. Adam Nathan, who chairs the Salvation Army's advisory board in San Francisco and leads the technological te leads a technology company. I can't believe I read that wrong. Describes seeing kegs set up to provide the afflicted with beer. So Kegger for the bums. Did you know San Francisco yeah. spends $2 million a year on a managed alcohol program? It provides free alcohol to people struggling with chronic alcoholism who are mostly homeless. Mostly? Mostly. Well, I guess we don't have to be homeless then. I stumbled upon the building where they have this program, and here is what I saw. Die fly. Ooh, I got him. Die fly? Die fly, I got him. Die fly, don't bother The location me. is an old hotel in Soma. Inside the lobby, they had kegs set up to taps where they were basically giving out free beer to the homeless who have been identified with alcoholic use disorder, otherwise known as drunks. While there have been some limited studies showing promise, I have to point out a couple of things that troubled me. Number one, the Department of Public Health is spending $2 million of taxpayer money to give free alcohol to mostly homeless people struggling with alcoholism. Remember, this is just one city. Right. Number two, it's set up so people in the program just walk in and grab a beer and then another one all day long. The whole thing is very odd to me and just doesn't feel right. Providing free drugs to drug addicts doesn't solve their problems. It stretches them out. Where's the recovery in all of this? This is what harm reduction refers to as safe supply or safer supply. Well, okay, but you're not going to get illicit alcohol that makes you a worse addict. It's just alcohol. There's currently a huge debate I mean, in maybe Canada. Maybe hooch or something, but... It, yeah. there's, there's currently a huge debate in Canada about this idea as British Columbia has been experimenting on humans by giving them free opioids in the hopes that they won't use fentanyl. That sounds like BC to me. The results have been mixed at best and bad at worst in that it appears that many of these free drugs just get resold on the street for fentanyl or worse. I'm no doctor or expert on issues of drug policy, but I am a taxpayer. When did this managed alcohol program get approved? Where were the public hearings? Why is it hidden away in an old hotel? Who approved a $2 million budget for it? So he lists uh, videos where you can watch the proponents, the same ones that you'll find at counterculturewise.com. <sighs> 
Speaking of bad ideas, I'm going to start this by saying I was a Cub Scout back in the 70s, and that's going to be important for the last part of this article. After 114 years of being known as the Boy Scouts of America, the nation's largest scouting organization is changing its name to the more inclusive Scouting America. Of course they are. The major rebrand announced Tuesday comes after years of turmoil for the organization, as well as major changes meant to stem the tide of declining membership. The new Scouting America name is also a reflection of the organization's biggest change, the decision five years ago to welcome girls into its ranks at all levels. So basically, and we're going to get more evidence of this, but it sounds like... They're stemming the tide of declining membership by doing stuff that's going to make the make membership just decline. And yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> visitors to the Boy Scouts of America website Tuesday were greeted by a pop-up message, boink, explaining that the forthcoming name change was made to be a more welcoming of the entire scouting community and would take effect February 8th, 2025. <clears throat> Though our name will be new, our mission remains unchanged. We are committed to teaching young people to be prepared. Be prepared. This is a Boy Scout thing. That used to be, yeah. For life, Roger A. Crone. Not Roger A. Crone, but Roger A. Crone, (laughs) President and Chief Executive of Scouting America, and one of the people responsible for this mess, said in a statement Tuesday, this will be a simple but very important evolution as we seek to ensure that everyone feels welcome in scouting. By inviting people who make other people feel unwelcome. Anyway, for years the Boy Scouts have faced pressure from progressive members and outside groups. Who cares about the outside groups? To be more accepting, not just of girls, but of LGBTQ, XPV, MSG, Scouts, and troop leaders. The Boy Scouts ended its longtime ban on openly gay Scouts in 2013 and its prohibition on gay troop leaders in 2015. Two years later, the organization announced that it would allow transgender boys in its ranks. Oh boy. The organization is officially non-sectarian, but asks members to affirm a belief in God. That will disappear by 2027. I guarantee. I'm giving, I'm being... I'm being really generous in saying it'll take that long. Mm -hmm. The changes to allow gay scouts and troop leaders cause rifts with some religious groups. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, one of the scouts' biggest partners, wisely, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. cut ties with the organization when it began to accept gay scouts and leaders. I'm not anti-gay, so shut up. At the time, roughly 20% of scouts were Mormon. So listen to this. 20%... One fifth, fifth. Yep. of their membership went away. Gone. Yep. Just by that, by by those two things. While the scouts spent it, years trying to keep gay and bo- gay and trans boys out, not hard enough, I guess. The organization in recent years has tried to get girls in. The move to allow girls sparked a bitter feud with the actual Girl Scouts of the United States of America. That should be their name, the actual Girl Scouts which accused the Boy Scouts of trying to prop up its membership by encroaching on the Girl Scouts' turf as both groups faced declining membership, which has only accelerated since the pandemic. Stop blaming the pandemic. Stop blaming the pandemic on everything. You let the Rainbow Mafia control every move you make. You are going to fail. Get woke. Go broke. If they would have doubled down on both sides, first of all, Girl Scouts, I was a Girl Scout. It was boring as hell. My mom had to drag me there kicking and screaming because when I heard Scouts, I thought, oh, we're going to be riding horses. We're going to be camping. We're going to be learning how to... You're going to be doing the stuff the Boy Scouts do. and arrows. Well, that's what Girl Scouts used to do. They used to go canoeing. They used to, like, learn how to cook outside. They used to learn how to make fires. They don't do that anymore. They don't do any of that anymore. Even back they, then? They, they didn't do No, that when I was a kid, we got to make soap, and it wasn't even really making soap. We got bars of soap that we got to decorate with sequins. It was stupid, and I hated it, and it was dumb. And we basically got to do crafts, and it was boring. I had horses. I could have been out having fun doing real things, you know, but no. Here I am sitting around in a dress with a bunch of other girls in a dress. It was boring. 
If Girl Scouts would go full on Merida, let's run around in the woods shooting bows Your and arrows with bad. their hair flowing in the breeze <laughs> and, you know, bare feet and learning how to survive in the wilderness, they would have more girls than they know what to do with. If the Boy Scouts would triple down and say, we are turning boys into men, we're getting rid of the kid diddlers, and we are going to learn how to hunt and fish and, you know, shoot bows and arrows and shoot guns, and we're going to learn how to be Christian men they would have more kids than they know what to do with. Instead, they let the Rainbow Mafia ruin everything because they're a bunch of self-hating losers that can't leave good things alone. And so they have to come in and ruin it all so they can feel sorry for themselves in the corner while everything crumbles down around them because they can't stand seeing anything good or right or fun happen without them. I don't know how to top that, except there are, there are a few more details I really want to drive home Melanie's point. In a letter to then Boy Scouts President Randall Stevenson, then Girl Scouts President Kathy Hoppenka Hannon said it was, and I agree with this, inherently dishonest to claim to be a single gender organization while simultaneously endeavoring upon a co-ed model. So they're not claiming it anymore. They're not claiming it anymore. Now they're nothing. Now yeah. they're just nothing. Now they're just like every other Rainbow Mafia controlled group, boring, mm. yawn, moving along. I give them a year. In 2020, the Boy Scouts were rocked by public revelations. Rocked, I tell you, I'm so shocked and rocked that more than 84,000 people allege that they were sexually abused while in the Scouts. People? Just saying, that's what's in there. This is not, this is... So this, men, yeah. women, children, Boys, cats? let's just say boys. I mean, it says 84,000 people. Alleged they were sexually abused while in the Scouts with some claims dating as far back as the 1960s. The Scouts reached an historic $850 million settlement with victims after declaring Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the face of mounting legal claims. They should have what? folded then. But yeah. hey, have you ever noticed that anytime a little boy gets diddled, he gets a cash settlement? But anytime a little girl gets raped by who knows who, nothing. We don't I, even I, get counseling. I get, I, it is sad. It is sad. We don't even get counseling. I, I, you don't? Well, okay. No. According to the Scouts, this this is something I wanted to point out that's really important. According to the Scouts 2023 annual report, the organization had more than 1 million children and young adults ages 5 to 20 enrolled in its membership programs. So they the reason, out one-fifth of them. How many do they have left? Well, let me put it this way. I said at the beginning, I was a Scout back in 1973 when they were at their height of membership. Back then, 4 million boys. Not... One million, everybody, four million boys. And that was back when they were training boys to be responsible, God-fearing I'm men. surprised they managed to keep one-fourth of them. Well, and they probably don't do any of the fun things anymore. They I, I don't know what they do anymore. Or, I don't know what they do anymore. I couldn't, I, I don't I mean, care they, they, anymore. They sell popcorn and, I mean, most of these kids... Their parents are doing it for them. Yeah, you know, you're lucky if you even see them in their outfits, and they can't. Oh, talk. they still, they, they still can't do make the eye contact. They still do the Pinewood Derby. Okay, that's cool. And they do, they do still camp. Yeah, see, Girl Scouts don't even get to do that anymore. Yeah, probably somebody's little precious darling stubbed her toe, and now nobody gets to do it. <sighs> okay. Well, since we're defunding the police, <laughs> might as well send the money elsewhere. Oh, wait, what's this? <laughs> this is the <laughs> stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> so Miami Beach police are rolling out the world's first Rolls Royce police car. Just one, mind you. How is this going to make better cops? How is this going to protect know. the public? How is this going to help Protect people from criminals. Mm -hmm. A Rolls Royce. I mean, what are you supposed to do? Drive up next to the criminal and ask them for Grey Poupon? I mean, seriously, what is the point of this? Basically, they're just chauffeurs at this point. <laughs> is there like a mini bar in the back? Ooh, oh, wait, that's San Francisco. That's San Francisco. Seriously, though, a Rolls Royce? What, what could possibly... Mm. Miami Beach police could be riding a new set of wheels soon as the department unveiled the world's first police luxury car. That's not your job. That is not your job. Your job is to go fast and catch criminals. 
And beat them up and throw them in jail. Not necessarily beat them up, although there are a few I wish you would. The department announced the first Rolls Royce on Thursday afternoon. This is moronic. The new set of wheels is part of an effort to get people to join the police force. But that's for all the wrong reasons. That's for all the wrong reasons. This is top of the line. This is the best you can get as far as it relates to vehicles. The police department is the best there is in the country. So um, let's spend our money on fancy foo-foo cars and not on, oh, I don't know, let's see here. Um, maybe training? Incentives. Training, uh, maybe? Real incentives that will... I have an idea. Let's train them. Let's train the cops. That's a good idea. Oh, no, no, no. Let's get Rolls Royces. This is stupid. I'm sorry mm. I sound really angry, but these two stories are dumb. Yeah, they're dumb. The car was made in collaboration with... Who cares? So recruiting police officers in this country today is a difficult thing to do. Using this car to help us do recruitment is going to be great. So you too can join the Miami Police Department <clears throat> and maybe someday, if you're lucky, you might get to see the inside of a Rolls Royce. That doesn't belong to you. That doesn't so belong who cares? to you. That you don't get to drive. That you're not going to let any criminals be in because they would ruin the upholstery. I mean, it, it. Yeah, it's it's one hundred and five percent all around dumb. They can't use it for training because it might get damaged. They can't use it for actual criminal work because it would get damaged. There goes the Florida cops. Oh, Lord. Bleh. <laughs> you know my Lord. Uh, Just I'm, oh my Lord. <laughs> I am ready for some wonderfuler. I think it's time, and you know what? What you usually pick a tearjerker for me. But this time, I got to pick a tearjerker for you. All right. So, well, let's see how many jerking tears I get here. <laughs> hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd what go? The sounder. Okay. Now I'm muting the mic. Make me turn the mic back on. Here on Counterculture Wise, we may rant. We may rave. But most of all, we go against the current culture because we believe, to the core of our beings, that humans are good and the world is an amazing and beautiful place. At the beginning of our show, we give you news of the weird and wonderful, but that is just the tip of the magnificent iceberg that is our world. We now present news of the wonderfuller. Of course, this is my favorite song. To make Jimmy cry. Will I cry? Mm, you I be the we'll judge. Deborah Solomon could think of no other gift that would delight her mother more than to reunite her with her favorite kindergarten pupil decades later. Aww. Well, that's cool. I remember my kindergarten teacher. I remember mine, Miss really Simpson. Lasting... She's really sweet. Mrs. Meisner. I, I don't even know if she's alive or anything. I know nothing. Yeah. But it was a I brand. It was a brand new teachers. school. It was a. It, it was a brand new school in Fountain Valley, California. Well, wait. I take that back. I remember my fourth grade teacher, Mr. Carlson, because my dad threatened to beat him up, and then he was nice to me the rest of the year because he was a real jerk. And then I remember one junior high teacher and then one high school teacher, and they just happened to be married to each other. I remember almost all of my teachers, I and I learned something from almost all of them. Some of them were oh, no, just I do taking remember up my, space. My but... high school biology teacher, because he's the one who taught me the term anti vivisectionalist. Very nice. And I didn't have to dissect a frog as long as I passed the test. Anti vivisectionalist. Wow. <laughs> my favorite teacher was Mr. William Campbell, who was my uh, music teacher in junior high. And he was actually a singer in the Los Angeles Chorale. Oh, wow. And I was thrilled to see him on TV one time. He had a gigantic forehead, and that's all I saw was his forehead bobbing wow. up and down. And he was singing. And then you caught up to him with your gigantic forehead. Yes. <laughs> I, I was inspired by him to grow a gigantic forehead. There you anyway, go. retired from 27 years of teaching, Karen Solomon was set to celebrate her 80th birthday in April. You go, girl. And her daughter had a great idea, although it was a long shot for success. I could think of only one present for my mom. A reunion with her favorite kindergarten student from the 1980s when she taught at Lanning Avenue School in Verona, New Jersey. She googled Seiyi Fayanju and was able to reach out to him through his faculty page at Stanford University. Wow, where she's he now a good works... kindergartner teacher. Wow, Not only did he end up being a start. doctor, yeah. 
He's what? a doctor at Stanford. <laughs> yep. Good yeah. job. <laughs> Luckily, the reunion was set to take place in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and Sayi has some close friends and family in nearby Chicago. So despite his busy schedule as a doctor in Palo Alto, California, he was hopeful he might be able to make it. As luck would have it, the stars aligned, and I was flying back from a conference on the East Coast that week. So a Wisconsin stop was added to the schedule, Aww. he told GNN. He gave my mom the thrill of a lifetime, said Deborah in a mail to GNN. Good News Network is what this oh, is. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Okay. When the moment was ready, her granddaughter Mira guided Seiyi to come through the doorway and stand right behind Mrs. Solomon. Her daughter asked her about old students from classrooms past, and then Seiyi popped out from behind. When he appeared, my mom jumped for joy, said Deborah. Now an 80-year-old woman dump, jumping for joy. That's go, a sight lady. I would have loved to have seen. Yeah, me too. Everyone in the room was crying. Tears of happiness well, I mean, you and could, love. You could go watch um, The Stones. You'll see an 80-year-old jumping around. Well, that's true. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, Mrs. Solomon was a phenomenal teacher, mentor, and friend for my family. When we moved to Verona, New Jersey in the late 1980s, I started in kindergarten with her where she taught us all the usual things people learn at school. But she also modeled kindness and understanding for all the kids in her classes. We came from very different cultures. My parents are immigrants from Nigeria, and most of the people in my Newark school were African American or Latino. I had never met someone who celebrated Hanukkah, so I learned about her culture and so much more. I think that it helped me to become more interested in learning about other cultures, which sparked a lifelong love for history and geography. He has a great smile. He does. Gigantic smile. Beautiful. He kept in touch with Mrs. Solomon over the years, even after his family moved and she retired. During his first week of college, he sent her an email to say hello and thank her for her guidance. Uh, she was also his third grade math teacher. Oh, so he got to double dip. Okay. Yep. He got her twice. Yay. During the pandemic, his father asked, how is Mrs. Solomon? Afraid her email might bounce. He tried sending one anyway, and they connected for a video chat. She even wore a bracelet that my parents had given her back in the 1990s as a gift to say thanks. Mrs. Excuse me. Mrs. Solomon enjoyed traveling, and Sayi says he loved getting postcards from her every summer from cool places like San Diego and San Antonio. I will vouch San Antonio and San Diego are really cool places. I still have them somewhere in my parents' house. It was great. I just said that where I went to boot camp was a cool place. Anyway, mm -hmm. all right. It was great to meet her family and dozens of people who came to the party from her retirement community. I called my dad in New Jersey, and he said hello and congratulations by phone. It was such a magical afternoon. I am so glad to have been part of this special occasion for her. I have been the lucky beneficiary of amazing teaching throughout my life and feel sad that some of those amazing instructors passed on before I could tell them thank you. I think that if people are able, they should take the time to reach out to those teachers, mentors, and coaches that help them to be better versions of themselves. Mrs. Solomon thanked her daughters, saying she will never forget the incredible surprise reunion, especially when it turned out to be her favorite student. No, I think that's so sweet that she remembered him after all those years and he remembered her. And he went on to be a doctor. Good job, kid. All right, folks. Well, hopefully you have a special person from your past that you can look up and reconnect with. And we wish you a very, very amazing week. We will be right back here next week. Um, oh, before we go, Roger Stone. <laughs> Yeah, this he is actually, why we can't have nice things. He actually got Rod Stewart to trend on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this this came up while we were producing this episode. I wonder what he was thinking. I don't know, but he showed a picture implying that it was from the uh, New Jersey rally for Trump and saying, I, I, bet, and it's I so bet Biden wouldn't get numbers like this. Obviously not. And this is a photo of four million people attending a Rod Stewart concert from 30 years ago in Brazil. Yeah. I, Do you think so, I'm stupid? Da, 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 I can't da, even da. imagine what his what his goal was there. I, Dude, we don't need you don't need to fake and lie no, you your way you through this. You don't need this. to fake it. I mean, there's pictures from the rally and there were lots of people. Million people there. I mean, we've been to a rally in Vegas and it was standing it, room only. You yeah, it was get crazy. In. We we yeah, we were outside. Um and we've told the story before. I wasn't even sure I was going to vote for Trump at that point. And then, you know, Melanie bought me a Veterans for Trump button. And I guess that... Uh, <laughs> that kind of sealed what, the old deal there. Yeah, sealed the deal. Anyway, I thought that was a funny thing to end on. So, folks, may you have an amazing day. We pray for your family to enjoy prosperity and happiness. And we will see you uh, next week. Bye-bye.
Counterculture Wise is a Stormcat production. Thank you for joining our growing family of listeners. All links from the show are available on our website, counterculturewise.com. Find our archives on any of your favorite podcast hosts. We engage in satire, commentary, and generally laugh at the ridiculousness of our crumbling society. Our only medical or financial advice is to not follow any financial or medical advice given by podcasters. Our animations, interviews, holy crap segment, and other videos are put out on BitChute and Rumble, and only in part on YouTube because they hate free speech. Our show is entirely funded by listeners like you. Visit our ever-expanding merch store or our subscribe star, where you can get outtakes, extra videos, and sneak peeks. If you would like to be a guest on our program, feel free to contact us via our website. Just click on the link at the top that says, Be a Guest on Our Show. For more fun and cat pics, please visit our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. For complaints about our show, please fill out the ID10T form on our website, and we will give it the attention it deserves. Meanwhile, no matter how cruel the world may be around you, always remember the importance of kindness. Be kind to each other, be kind to animals, and be kind to yourself. See you you next next week. week!